a howdy doody doodles. Here we are again, Southern YGO's race. So this is another let's build because the um, the ban list dropped again. And some people may or may not know that um, before Alistair cursed me to forever and all summon him, I was a monarch player, bless me. And I um, topped one regional, um, came third with this deck. Um, when, oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, so in the last round, someone playing Monarch FTK decided that uh, through the standings and the records that if I won, I could top. And if he won, he couldn't top. So it gave me the win. And that's how I won the regional. Thank you, Justice. So I believe I'm qualified to talk about this deck. Um, my previous version of this video did take me 28 minutes. So I'm going to try and get through this a little bit quicker. So first up, we have our big boys. These are free resources. They do big stuff. This is a resource game because it summons cards on your opponent's turn, pops cards and return, and then draws you two cards and searches you one. That's pretty good. Also, is your interruption. Never play it any less than three. A lot of people go, I don't want to rank a rage. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd probably play at least two, if not three, just because normal tribute summon for one gets you free resources off of this it just continues to give you more free resources resource game strong um is actually a really really good card please do not discount it um the only way that you, i believe you can play this deck going forward um is three mega the star loss because um domain lock is how you win the game also a lot of people are running outs for domain lock so what you have to do is you have to smoke grenade with the thief which weirdly enough the stars can do um, and you have to rip the alpha domain out of their hand and then hope that they don't draw another one. Um, I just think that's probably the best way to go forward, so I'll probably run three of him as well. Next up, we have uh, a mention to every smaller monarch and a mention to every bigger monarch. Um, so both of these are really impactful, usually going second, almost exclusively going second, actually, um, apart from regular first styles, which is eh. Um, Kaius did see play first time. I probably don't have room for him now, but having a one tribute um, monarch that has a good effect is pretty good. And then the mega monarchs are really impactful going second, but eh. Something you'll see very prominent in every other, every other person's deck profile is the Fiends. Obviously, this has monarch stats. This does not, but this is a one tribute monster. Um, this is more impactful than this, but this has more synergy. Choose what you're going to do with them. I'd probably at least run one of this just because it's searchable and it's so strong. Um, however, like I said, this is a bigger impact. It can probably win you a whole bunch of games. It's up to you. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, run four of each. Um, Red Layer previously was the gap between the two because neither be Tribute E or Tribute Er. I don't find it to be overly impactful, um, especially since you can't run the extra variant because Brilliant Fusion's gone and you need to run a... Special summon archetypal number of special summon cards that have synergy with each other and boost your consistency, but don't necessarily conflict with the monarch cards and don't use normal summon. So, um, red layer is worth mentioning if you don't know what you're doing, run five. Um, Danger Dogman and the rest of the dangers to an extent, they're all just very good cards. This has monarch stats. Um, if you don't know necessarily what to fit in with the rest of them, you can add this because it's an extra consistency. Can be tribute E and can be tribute Er. It's worth thinking about. I'd maybe run one or two. Um, just a shout out to the fact that Ignis Heat has monarch stats. No, not every monster having monarch stats means that you can splash the deck together. Did you know that Salaman Great Beat Bison is a level 8 monster with monarch stats? It's terrible. In Salamangrate, and it's terrible as a monarch. But yeah, you can run these two decks together. It's pretty good. Same with Klee. Um, next up, we have our mini tribute E's. Um, uh, so these form a nice little resource loop. They are just very, very strong for the deck. These should be your normal summons. I can't say enough about them. Um, next up, we have another card. So similar to Thestalus that people, a lot of people aren't using. Um, Mithra. So this plays around the Gamma, this plays around an Imperm, this allows you to do the power play. So the biggest play you can do in this deck is two Tribute Summons in the turn. So this lets you do that. Um, I can't say enough about Mithra. Even So if you're doing your job right, and you've established Domain Lock, then the token they have shouldn't matter at all. Run through Mithra. Uh, next up we have... Oh, we're into the spells now, so you can see the card that got unbanned. I don't know if you've heard about this card before. It's Pantheon of the Monarchs. It lets you draw two cards, and then it's a search one card. Also known as Pantheon of the Engage. Um, next up, we have our uh, Dragon Buster Lock, um, Domain of the Three Monarchs. All three um, effects come up. Um, honestly, it's a very good card. That's how you win the game, play it through. Um, 
Uh, tenacity of the Monarchs, it searches your cards. Why, why would you run any less than three? Um, three Mark Storm, fourth, it's one of your primary removals, and it's just one hell of a threat card and one hell of a bait card. Um, the fact that it's searchable, the fact that you can... It, it's a good card. It's a good card. Um, in the fact that you can just activate it in any time during that turn. Should you want to tribute summon, you can tribute one of your monsters as if you're your own. Just that's all. So your opponent can't respond. I need to respond to the activation of Stormforth, and it's wonderful. Um, three Return of the Monarchs. <sighs> Monarchs work well because so much resource game as much as anything else. Your ceiling is relatively low, but your... <sighs> Consistency is also relatively low, but um, the resource game is immense, and this with Karaz is just plus city. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I would 100% run three. Also, sometimes on Therapus and Aether, you need just more names to send. One March, um, definitely something to run with the Fiends. Um, I don't know outside that whether you would need to run this or not, but as a one-off, it's absolutely fine. Did you know that Monarchs have a twin twister? So if you control a Monarch statted monster, you can destroy a set card. And if it's in the graveyard, you can banish it and another Monarch spell trap to then destroy a set card. And of course, you can add this back off a deer. You can search it off Tenacity. It's just a very, very good card to deal with macro. And it's Monarch themed. Speaking of which, did you know that Monarchs have an, uh, an Omni Negate? Strike of the Monarchs, searchable and are recoverable. It does require you to tribute a normal summoned or set level 5 or higher monster. Um, then you can target one card in the field, negate its effects for the rest of the turn, and then you get to draw a card. And you can banish it from the graveyard to change the attributes of the monster you control. Woohoo! Um, Thestalos gets its burn effect. Oh boy. Um, so, yeah, slightly better in a grind game, especially if you're going against something like maybe Eldritch. This might be um, significantly better to run in for. It's something you can think about. It's a pretty good card. So, um, weirdly enough, this deck got hit just before this card came out. So, one regional, um, someone played Monarchs with this and one Pantheism, and his profile, he said, I believe verbatim, it's fine as long as you don't banish the one-off Pantheism. Well, now we have three Pantheisms, I will definitely be testing this at three. Just for the extra consistency, the extra power plays, draw two is pretty good. Speaking of which, we the big expensive card um, helps you if you get hand-trapped. And then um, also does extra things. I, I, I don't know how I'd fit these in, but I'd probably run them. Um, next up we have our Forest Barrel Goods. This also wasn't out when um, the original Monarch deck was. It's just kind of a search, I'd say. Um, just with the Pantheism. Uh, I wouldn't run three just because it's it, the once per turn stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty good. Um, maybe run one or two other honestly I don't know then we have the regular foolish barrel which consistency card previously it was needed because of the uh, two interactions it could have either gaining back a banished thing or with um, uh, Erebus um, and back it's okay um, pseudo storm forth it targets it's kind of bad but going second it could be viable terraforming I don't think you need it you have enough access to main through pantheism um, and tenacity, so that's there. One for one. So this uh, facilitates without Mithra um, the biggest play the deck can do, which is the double tribute summon, and it gets you into the Idea Idos loop, which is pretty strong. Speaking of which, um, Idea Idos is pretty good. Uh, Idea is level one warrior. Um, so I used to think that you could you could brick on drawing five cards, but you can't brick on drawing six, um, just because the, the ratios can work out that way sometimes. Um, so upstart as just consistency is pretty good. You could run Mystic Mine in this, especially where you're running Strike of the Marks, maybe as a control build. Um, it's just something they could think about. Uh, Magical Midbreaker Field protects the idea, which is what you want to go through. Um, if the Erebus gets, I don't know, like impermed, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so, and you can usually replace this with Domain for next turn, even though you haven't got any spell speed to this stuff that's going to target or destroy. Um, the only other stuff I couldn't find to fit in was um, Celestial Observatory, Trading, and Lure of Darkness. So Lure of Darkness, um, even if you increase the amount of darks, I rarely find that I resolve it and I want to banish any of the darks in my hand. Trading can be a little specific at points because um, it only helps specific bad hands. Um, and on a good hand, sometimes you don't really want to use it. And kind of the same thing with Celestial Observatory, just because you can lower a Monarch's level to then shove it into deck. Um, uh, off the domain you can lower its level um, 
uh, once again, same sort of theory. So that is those. Um, this is to remind me to talk about hand traps. So I would not run any more than six non-archetypal um, or non-engine cards in this deck, just because you need so much from column A and column B to perform your plays. Um, you need to run on that sort of like midi like medium level of, of ceiling and consistency. Um, and similar to what some other decks have done with Null Summons, I really wouldn't run more than five or six, just because then you shouldn't be seeing more than one in any given hand. But you definitely can run hand traps. I don't know how many um, or what ones exactly, but I'll keep it less than six. Same with siding. Um, you shouldn't be siding in too many cards just because your engine can be a little bit eh. Um, honestly, one of my favourite cards in decks. So the resource game is real with this deck. I think this is probably how you beat Eldlich in the fact that you can just keep bringing this back. Um, and this also constantly recycles your cards. Um, so with this card, you can actually almost play forever. And the fact that this can constantly re recycle your um, Monarch Spells traps back into deck and then... Yeah, as, as long as you, you don't get your entire field like cleared, you can just play infinitely. It's um pretty fun. Next up we have the Monarchs Erupt. I'll probably end up running one just because it's a searchable power card. And the hand, so there will be hands that are strong enough that you don't need to search domain or any of the other cards. Um, and then you can just get to this. And it means that especially of things like the Karaz power play where you draw to search one it's something that you can just try and get towards and of course any future like pantheisms and tenacity and everything else so monarchs erupt is very strong probably run one escalation i've never liked this card it, it can come up especially like is if you get hand trapped i suppose um but that's weirdly specific hand um maybe with desires or more true draw two cards it can come up but i found that the hands that required this to be good was so specific it wasn't worth running but feel free to run it if you think so and then something like crackdown which you'd have to run in the six ish spots for hand traps uh, it does steal a monster and then you contribute it which is hey pretty good so this version of the video only took 12 minutes 13 minutes there we go um but i love you dearly um i, I like monarchs um i can't go to locals and i can't play them which is kind of sad <sighs> Ta-da!